Hello, it is I, Solomon Nelson. Today I'll explain how I went from 81.9 kilograms of body weight on the 22nd of October to 75.1 kilograms of body weight on the 3rd of December. That is roughly a seven kilo loss in six weeks time while preserving all of my muscle mass and strength. First, I'll cover why I decided to reduce my body weight like this. Second, I'll cover what I did from a training and nutrition standpoint to achieve this weight loss. And I'll conclude by discussing what I learned from this experience, what I think I did well, but also what I could have done better or considered before embarking on this fat loss phase. Before I continue though, allow me to state that none of this video's content constitutes advice. In this video, I'll only detail what I personally did. You can implement my strategies if you wish, but note that my approach was tailored to me and my own individual circumstances and goals. In fact, when copied exactly, I reckon my approach could go pretty badly for a good number of people. Before this fat loss phase, I'd spent the past year or so in a calorie surplus, that is consuming more calories than I was expending, trying to gain weight and gain muscle mass. While I was successful in gaining muscle mass, an undesirable amount of body fat eventually came for the ride. I gained even more body fat after I tore my hamstring in September because I was worried that I would lose muscle in my legs if I underate. So once my hamstring finally healed, I'd reached a crossroads where I could either keep gaining weight and get really fat or do a short aggressive diet to get lean. And to me, the latter option was the more appealing. And the reason why it was the more appealing option was twofold. First, I just feel better when I'm lean. And second, dieting can resensitize your body to muscle growth. The resensitization theory goes something like this. After enough time doing high volume weightlifting and eating in a calorie surplus, your body becomes used to that growth environment and won't grow muscle optimally. So if you want to keep growing, it makes sense to give your body a bit of a break rather than fight an uphill battle. You reduce your food intake and stop training so hard to become more sensitive to those growth stimuli. Also, I believe that being lean improves your nutrient partitioning ratio. That is surplus calories are likelier to go to muscle building rather than fat accretion when your body fat is lower. So the primary motivator behind this aggressive fat loss phase was really not to improve the aesthetics of my physique, though I'm certainly not complaining about that, but to resensitize my body to muscle growth techniques. Sometimes in order to accomplish a goal, it's better to take one step backward to take two steps forward. My goal in terms of training was to do the bare minimum amount of work required to preserve my muscle mass and strength. This was around eight to 10 hard sets a week for most body parts. I lifted weights six days a week, as I always do, but my sessions weren't too difficult. Well, my leg sessions were pretty hard, but they didn't require a religious amount of effort to complete as they have in the past. In the first week of my diet, I did my six workouts mostly as normal, but with slightly less effort. I also wrote down the exact weight and number of reps I did on each set of each exercise. Then for the remainder of my diet, for the workouts I did in each subsequent week, all I did was copy the exact workouts I did in week one. That is literally it. So the reason why my effort was lower in week one of the diet should now be apparent. It was to give myself regal room for later on when those same workouts would become harder due to the fatigue I was building up. Fortunately, my workouts remained perfectly doable the whole time, which I was happy about. Was this a boring approach? I suppose it was, but it worked. As for cardio, my sole form of cardio was walking. I took on average 10 and a half thousand steps a day over the course of my diet. Walking is great, I endorse it. It's easy, it's healthy, it doesn't take a toll on your recovery and it burns calories. So don't write off walking just because you don't break into a sweat or puff yourself out by doing it. You don't have to run yourself into the ground to get lean or run period. Now the diet is really the thing that matters. The single most important thing I did to lose this much weight was to put myself in a large calorie deficit. That is, I consumed fewer calories than I expended over the course of my diet. Let's get into specifics. Usually I aimed to take in a bit beneath 2000 calories a day, but never fewer than 1800. 
For me, this resulted in rapid weight loss because it was a deficit of around 1,300 calories beneath the intake I needed to maintain my body weight. In terms of macronutrients, I wanted enough protein to preserve my muscle mass, and I wanted the bare minimum amount of fat to stay healthy. So protein I set at 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, and fat I set at 0.66 grams per kilogram of body weight. Carbs made up the rest of my intake. So I usually went with 200 grams of carbs, 180 grams of protein, and 50 grams of fat daily. I split those macros up into four to six meals a day, mostly spaced three to five hours apart. I saved most of my carbs and fats for dinner, and I would spend more or less the rest of the day eating nothing but fruit and protein powder. A typical day of eating for me was this. Upon waking, I would always have a shake consisting of one scoop of whey protein powder and some psyllium husk for fiber. One to three hours pre-workout, I would often have a banana and a kiwi fruit for some carbs. During my workout, I would always have a scoop of Powerade powder for some carbs and a scoop of whey protein powder. Post-workout, I'd usually have another protein shake. My go-to was a scoop of whey protein powder, again, 150 grams of strawberries and 50 grams of spinach. For dinner, I was flexible. Rice, pasta, eggs, vegetables, homemade crepes, occasionally restaurant meals, almond spread, anything healthy that fit my macros and I would usually wash it down with some diet soft drink. Before bed, I would always have a shake consisting of two scoops of casein protein powder, but occasionally just one scoop if I had a really high protein, high calorie dinner, say. Without going into too much detail, here are some things that I think I did well. One, in terms of both diet and training, I wasn't excessively rigid. I would modify my plans if things came up. For example, I was able to nip some nasty shoulder pain in the bud by modifying my training routine, and I was able to eat restaurant meals when invited, just by eating a bit less earlier on in the day, and being cautious not to overeat at restaurants. 2. I tended to eat nutritious, calorie-sparse foods on my diet, like fruits and vegetables. While theoretically I could have fit foods like chocolate, donuts, pizza, and beer into my diet and still lost weight, I think of that as a bad idea, at least just for me personally. The reasons why are a little outside of the scope of this video, but I might touch on that another day. And three, while I've done successful diets before, this was the very first diet where I've consistently tracked my calorie and macronutrient intake. I learned a lot from this practice. For example, I learned that I used to overeat protein and undereat fat. Tracking my intake added a valuable dimension of precision to my eating, and while I admit it was tedious at first to track everything, I've now made a habit of measuring my intake, and I still do it to this day, even though I'm back in a calorie surplus. As for what I could have done better, I think my rate of weight loss was a bit too fast. I lost around 1.4% of my body weight per week, and while I think I got away with losing that much weight scot-free, I think if I were a more advanced lifter, closer to my genetic potential, I'd be putting myself at risk of muscle loss with such a fast rate of weight loss. I'll likely do another one of these cuts in future, but when I do, I'll either use a more conservative rate of weight loss, or I'll just diet for a shorter period. Overall though, I'm happy with my result and the ease with which I achieved them. I'm not going to lie, I'm good at dieting. I was a bit hungry in the first week of the diet, but aside from that, it was a breeze, and I could have easily gone for longer. I attribute this ease to a few things, like sleeping well, doing the diet during a low-stress environment, that is my uni holidays, and maybe even my genetics. But more than anything, I just love the process of scientific eating, and how it can be incorporated with weightlifting to attain a lean and muscular physique. If you have any questions about this, I would be more than happy to answer them. This is Solomon Nelson signing out, more content on the way.